Well, the fun is over. This is our last day at Manitou Weather Station Lodge. I uh, did, did a little different this year. Um, broke it into four or five videos. Last year, we did one big film. I'll link it below. But yeah, it's been an amazing stay. Huge shout out to Chris. Thank you for inviting me back. Yeah, it was good. But it's our last day. The boat is loaded with gear right now. We are gonna fish our way back to the landing, back to the lodge. There's a waterfall around the corner. We're gonna go check out, see what's kicking around. But that's, that's one of my favorite parts about this system is just the variety. You've got largemouth, you've got lake trout, you've got smallmouth, you've got walleye, you've got pike, you've got muskies. It's got it all, it's super fun, crystal clear water. But uh, yeah, we're gonna take off and see what we can find. Hint of lime is just so good. I had a lot of chips on that drive. In the springtime, early in the year, inflows, creeks flowing in, waterfalls can just be a huge concentrator for fish. Hoping there's some fish here. There's, I forget what these falls are called, but just around the corner from the lodge. Um, I wanna do some fly fishing. So that's the plan. I got my eight weight along, my eight weight. So fly rods, uh, instead of like being light, medium light, medium heavy, heavy, like a normal fishing rod is rated. They're weighted by, rated by weights. There's some science behind it. It has to do with the weight of the line and stuff. But essentially, you have numbers all the way from like zero up to 13. So if you're doing bass, smaller trout, you know, in that five to seven weight range, if you're doing pike, probably nine or 10 weight. If you're doing muskie, 12 weight. If you're doing sailfish or whatever, 13 weight or something like that. So we got an eight weight, which would be pretty good. Yeah, and it's something else is a lot of people, when they think about fly fishing, they think, fishing on the surface, which is great, you know, using dry flies, using poppers. But the more, once you, you know, really get into it, you'll realize that probably 70, 80% of fly fishing is under the surface. The whole point of this heavy line, this thick line, is to get the fly out there. The weight of the line actually brings the fly with it because a, a fly on its own is too light to cast, right? So we're using this small little leech imitation. It's called the woolly bugger. It's probably the most popular fly in the world. It catches everything. Um, and it should be good. I mean, people use black hair jigs, which imitate leeches. They use those for bass all the time. So I think this uh, should do the trick. We're out of the wind around the corner here. I'm gonna put the trolling motor in. And we're gonna do my first fly fishing session of the year. So fly fishing 101, wind direction is super important. So I'm lefty. I can feel the wind hitting my left ear. If you can feel the wind hitting your casting arm, you're in trouble. So either I need to cast on my backhand or I need to change the way I'm gonna cast because if I'm left-handed casting, it's gonna blow that line over me and it's gonna to wanna to hook me. If you're new to fly fishing, you gotta be careful not to hook yourself because it's, it's a very easy thing to do. So I'm gonna be casting on my backhand right now and we'll see what we can do. The less things to tangle on, the better. And barefoot's a good way to fly fish as well. So right now this is called stripping. I'm just pulling it in, keeping the line in my index finger and just giving it that swimming motion through the water. Fly fishing is just great. It's like every cast you make is an accomplishment, which I know sounds cheesy, but it's just like a good cast. It feels good. Fly fishing is a, it's fulfilling. And barefoot's good so you can feel the line when you're standing on it. And you will hook everything in the boat, like everything, anything that you could possibly hook, you will hook it with your line. Some people use like stripping baskets or stripping mats. You would think for fly fishing, you want a strong wind behind you to help move your line out, but actually no wind is what you want because your back cast, you know, when it goes behind you is just as important as the forward. Always line management. I'm always trying to deal with the line and make sure it's not wrapped around things because if you do hook a big pike or whatever, something big, even a big bass, you want to, needs to be able to run. Oh, there we go. I thought it was a weed. A little smally, it's all right. There you go, number one. Hopefully, many more. Cute little guy. It's super shallow here, but I think they could be just hiding anywhere in this shallow rock weed stuff. Ooh, that's a nice bass. Oh, no! Oh. I'm just keeping the rod low so the line doesn't have too much drag. Oh, 
That's a fish. We got a fish right in the fast water. Oh, he's got a buddy with him. That was cool. That was super cool. Baby bass number two. All right, let's go back in that fast water. Maybe they're just waiting for stuff to come down. Oh, I can see him there. Oh, that was cool. So cool. Fly was just inhaled. Baby bass number three, gone. There we go. That feels a little better. Still not big, but... Oh, he's got so many buddies. The bass are just stacked. Oh my. Look at all of them. Baby bass. All right, I know where they live now. There were so many fish that followed that one in. There must have been a dozen. Oh! These fish, look at them. They're trying to eat it off of them. This is wild. Absolutely wild. I've never seen them like hitting the other fish. I bet you I catch two at once. All right, baby bass going back. Okay, we got to try something crazy. We're going to try to put a second fly on the back and see if I can catch two at once. That's going to be our second fly that we tie on there. Little bait fish looking guy. All right, we got the rig. We got the bugger bait fish. I'm gonna call it the bugger bait fish. I'm gonna coin it if, if this becomes a thing. All right, we are attempting two bass at once on the fly rod. First cast. We got one. We got one. We got two! First cast. Look at this. We got two at once. Oh, the one came off. That was insane. All right, we almost did it. We almost did it, we'll try again. Sorry, I got a little excited there. That was instant. We got one, we got one. There we go. Ooh, there's one. Got one, got one. Seems to be the easy part. We got two. We got two, we did it. We did it! No! And then the other one came off. Oh, we lost him. No, it got off. It's just every cast. This is proving tougher than I expected. Goodbye, buddy. There are so many fish here, and they are so aggressive. How many bass have we caught? This is ridiculous. Well, we could not pull off the double. I tried my best. We hit, We had doubles hooked up. Probably three times. Ooh, that feels better. Not much better. We're catching a lot of fish. The Alabama rig of fly fishing. Well, that was pretty good for the first spot. I don't know how many bass we caught, but that was some of the craziest like bass following action I've seen, obviously. Yeah, they're tiny fish. But we are gonna move to a different part of the lake that I haven't fished before. And uh, we're going to see if we can find some bigger ones. I'm enjoying the fly fishing. Even though it's windy, it's good. It's good to change it up once in a while. I know some of you guys wanted to see some fly fishing. I'm not an expert by any means, but I think fly fishing can be just really intimidating, but it, it just doesn't need to be. Like as far as the rigging goes, if you get a seven or an eight, fit, eight weight rod, you can, you can really do almost everything with it. As far as like leader material goes, I'm just using a chunk of 10 pound fluorocarbon. I'm not doing any fancy tapered leaders with crazy knots. I just tied a couple loops and looped them together at the end between my fly line and my fluoro and then Tied it to my flies. Basic enough. All right, we're back. We're not goofing around anymore. We went to the single fly. No more, no more trying for a double. Nice bait fish fly. We're fishing shallow. We moved to a different part of the lake and I'm feeling good about it. I think we're gonna catch some bigger ones. I'm hoping we're gonna catch some bigger ones. Decent chance I hook myself with how windy it is. Ooh wee, she's windy. This, is, this direction's working pretty good right now though, for what I'm doing. I'm fishing fast, like I'm fishing for aggressive ones. 
need to find more waterfalls. That is gonna be the key to success. There we go. Took a bit. I'm gonna try not to drift into the rocks. Not big as the day. Still small, but hey, not getting greedy. That is a respectable smallie. He just inhaled that bait fish fly. Like a cast or two in this nook. And this wind. Ooh. Ooh, that's better. That's better. Oh, he's just starting all around. Oh, that's a nice one. Now I'm gonna try to pick up that line. This wind. Try to get to the front of the boat as well. This is what we're talking about. This is definitely my Vegas Smalley on the fly. Nice. There's a long fish. Not very thick, but that is beautiful. Probably 18 inches or so. Bait fish fly right in the snout. Awesome. She goes. Goodbye. Well, there we go. That's that's what I was looking for, more of an adult fish. So there's there's kind of two ways you can fight a fish. You can strip it in and then just pinch it between your finger, or you can get it onto the reel and then you can fight with the drag, right? So for bigger fish, you're gonna wanna get it onto the reel typically, but you never wanna give that fish slack. So it's kind of a, a game of cranking up the line when you can and keeping tension the whole time. But uh, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, so this is a 10 foot eight weight I'm using. And uh, yeah, just super basic. I know fly fishing can be intimidating, but you don't need to be able to, look what's going on here. <laughs> you don't need to be able to make long casts. Like for bass, for pike, you do not need to be able to make long accurate casts. Salt water can be a little more difficult, but if you just want to get into it, like pick an easy situation. Don't pick the windiest day ever. This is insane. We're gonna keep going. Just a largey on the fly would kind of be Icing on the cake for the trip. Ah, oh, I lost my fly. I feel like I'm always on the verge of a mental breakdown when I'm fly fishing. There's a fish. I finally did it! My first Manitou largemouth. We've now completed the Grand Slam with a very large mouth. Maybe my first largey on the fly, I'm not sure. Ooh, that might be a largey. That might be a better largey. Is that a big smallie? No, a nice smallie. Deadly. It's all coming together. That fly, I don't know if you can see how deep it is in his mouth. Another long and lean smallie on the fly rod. So fun. Oh, the fly was hooked on a weed and the fish just came and popped it off the surface. All right, goodbye, buddy. There's no shortage of fish. Jay, let's pick the windiest day and the windiest shoreline and go fly fishing. Okay. I'm drifting too fast, I can't keep up. All right, this little point, it's gonna have a big bass. Ooh, okay, not big. Did have a bass though. So in a situation like this, when the wind's gonna pound me into shore, my focus right now is staying off the point. I'll spot lock or I'll talon, but otherwise, you get too distracted by the fish and you're gonna get yourself into trouble. Your boat's gonna be on shore and you're gonna be hopping out. Okay, buddy, we gotta deal with this. Spot lock is struggling. All right, guys, well, the wind is getting out of control and I got a, a good boat ride home yet, so I gotta call it a trip. If you are thinking about getting to fly fishing, you should because it's, it's fun, it's something different, right? It's, uh, it's a new spin on maybe what you've been doing for years. Uh, I've done a lot of bass fishing, I haven't done a lot of fly fishing for bass. 
get yourself a seven weight or an eight weight. Uh, you could do pike with it, you could do trout with it, you could do bass with it. Like it's kind of, it's like a medium action rod. You can, you can kind of make do for a lot of different species. Uh, you know, a couple bait fish flies or woolly buggers and you can catch everything with it. You don't need to complicate it. I think uh, fly fishing can be a little intimidating. It does not need to be intimidating at all. You don't need to make a long cast um, and, and you'll get there if you, if you keep doing it. But anyways, huge shout out to Chris and the crew at Manitou Weather Station Lodge. You guys are amazing hosts once again. Please check them out. I will link them below. Don't forget your life jacket and your kill cord. We will see you on the water very, very soon.